Thank you for joining me today. We are on chapter number five for A Miracle for Samuel Lito. Our last lesson was exciting. Samuel Lito's mama and his sister became a Christian. Samuel Lito, his mama, and his sister, now they are praying. Oh, they are praying so hard for their papa. Please, God, please help Papa to feel better. Please help Papa to come home. See, Lord, please help Papa to come home. Even his little sister. Yes, yes, God, please help my Papa. Samuelito, he was inside when a neighbor came with some really exciting news. Senora, your husband is coming home tomorrow. I just found out they're going to bring the ambulance to the bottom of the, the pathway and we will bring him up on stretchers. Oh, we are so happy for you, Senora. Oh, si, sí, gracias. Thank you for telling me. Samuelito, we must get everything ready. <laughs> Samuelito's mama, they didn't have a big house to clean, but she still wanted to make sure everything was ready. And they talked all about how they couldn't wait to see Papa. Samuelito's mama, she made sure the, the floors were swept and everything was ready to go. And, and she even had the coffee going so that when Papa came, she would be able to give some coffee to those who brought her husband up. Later the next day, oh, it seemed like it took forever for Samuelito's mama and for him and his sister. Oh, but they had heard, Senora, the ambulance is here. We are bringing him up on the stretcher soon. If you remember, Samuelito, he lives high up in the mountain. And so no cars can go up to his village. They all have to kind of park at the bottom of a steep, narrow pathway. So it kind of took the men a little bit. But eventually, oh, they carried up a stretcher, one man on one end, another man on another end, and they brought Papa up. See, sí, yes, Mama, there's Papa. Oh, gracias, thank you, thank you. Please bring Papa in, put him right here. The men came and they had the stretcher and they were very careful. They lowered him onto the floor. He doesn't have a bed, does he? His bed has always been sleeping on the floor. Everybody was so excited, but Samuelito's mama had already told them to not be too excited and she would talk first. Oh, I'm so glad you are home, my husband. Oh, she gave his papa a big hug. He hugged her. It is good to be home. I am so glad to be here. Samuelito, my son. See, Papa? Yes? I know you have paid a lot of money out of the crack for me. Is there any money left? See, si, Papa, yes. Oh, a little, there is a little money left. I have still been working hard. Oh, Samuelito, it will be too late. You will be too old. Papa, Papa, please don't worry about the money right now. We want you to get some rest, Papa. And when you feel better, I'm going to tell you of something, something that can happen. I think somehow I will be able to go to school soon. How, how can you go to school soon without the money? Papa. You must get rest, and then I will tell you, See, si, yes, Papa, I will get you rest. And Samuelito, I will talk to you after I get your Papa situated. After Mama got Papa taken care of and after he was sleeping, Samuelito's Mama said, Samuelito, why did you tell your Papa that? You know there is no way for you to go to school. 
Mama, you heard the missionary lady. She prayed. And, and we are praying. God will make a way, Mama. I know. And when God makes school, when God makes a miracle happen, Papa will see it and Papa will believe. I am praying this. Oh, Samuelito, my son. I am praying it too, but how can God give us money we don't have? How can God make, make a way for you to go to school? I don't know, Mama, but we need to keep praying. That's what Samuelito, his mama, and his little sister, they decided they were going to pray. Do you see them praying? There they are. They're in the doorway. And they are learning to pray. Do you know they're learning that God is their friend? They're learning that God is their father. And that God is listening to them. This was a very special time. Papa started to get better. And before, they were praying a lot for Papa to feel better. So they started to see God answering that prayer. But they began to also pray a different kind of a prayer. Dear God, please let Papa become a Christian. See, God, I want my husband to know about Jesus. I pray for Papa too. They began to pray for Papa. Now, they tried to talk to Papa. Samuelito, one day he went up to his Papa. His Papa was feeling better. His Papa started to work a little bit. And Samuelito, he decided he was going to tell Papa. Papa, every night, Mama and little sister and I are praying for you. Samuelito, I know what your Mama and you and your sister have been doing. I, the lies you have listened to. I do not want to hear any of what you have to say, Samuelito. Oh, please, Papa, please let me... No, my son. No, Nino. I don't want to hear it. I will get better on my own. I will work hard on my own. See, Papa. Samuelito, he kept on working hard. He kept selling lizards by the highway. He kept taking his shoe shining kit and he would go to the bus stop. Now, I don't know if you remember, but from the very first story, Samuelito would shine shoes for men who would ride a bus to his village. They would get off the bus and they would walk to a, a, a tiny little lunchroom, they called it. That is how Samuelito, how he would earn money. And Samuelito, as he would shine those shoes, he would think, Oh, I am shining shoes, so one day I will be able to go to school, so now I can learn to read the Bible. Now, if you remember, at that bus stop, there was the blind man. The blind man, he's the one who always knew when the bus was coming. Before he could even, before it even came up, the blind man, he sensed every time when it was coming and he'd pick up his guitar and, and when people would get off the bus, the blind man would sing a, a sad song. Poor me, I need money. Well, one day after Samuelito had shined a lot of shoes, and after the blind man had gotten some money for, for begging, Samuelito, he told the blind man, Senor blind man, will you please, please let me tell you the story of the colors? No, I don't want to hear it. God does not love me, Samuelito. That is why I am blind, probably. Please, Samuelito. Please don't bug me. I, I, I don't want to go take a nap. Leave me alone. And the blind man, he would take his sombrero, he would take his hat, and he'd kind of pull it down over his eyes, and he would pretend to be asleep. But the blind man, he would be thinking, is this true? 
Would I be able to see heaven like the boy Samuelito says? Samuelito, tell me the story again. See, si, Senor Blind Man. Samuelito, he went through the wordless book. Yep, he went through the colors. Yellow, black, red, and white. And Samuelito said, Senor Blind Man, I know you can't see the colors on the page, but you trust me. And if you believe me and trust me, can you try a little bit to believe and trust God? Samuelito, I am tired. I do not want to hear the story anymore. Oh, he'd pull the sombrero over his eyes and he'd pretend to go to sleep like he always did. But he still kept thinking. And then one day, the blind man, after he had heard the story again, the blind man said, Samuelito, I, I can't explain it, but I believe. I have been thinking and thinking about what you say, and I've noticed a difference in you. And I, I do believe the story. Can you tell me the story again? <laughs> Samuelito, see, si, Senor Blind Man, I will tell the story again. If you believe, you can pray right there and ask God to be your Savior. And that is what happened. The blind man, he listened to the story again. And the blind man in his heart, he believed in Jesus, called on him to be his Savior. He became a Christian. Now the blind man he became excited to know that even though he couldn't see while he lived here on earth, that when he died, he would go to heaven. And up in heaven, he would be able to see. And this brought an encouragement and an excitement to the blind man's heart. And so now they were able to talk about other things. Samuelito and the blind man, one day, they were there, and, and, and they were at the bus stop, and the blind man picked up his guitar. And Samuelito thought, oh, see, the bus is coming. And Samuelito saw, poof, a big cloud of smoke. And then, blah, 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 the bus pulled up, and the men were getting off the bus. But something was different this time. Samuelito, he didn't quite know what, but he grabbed his shoe shining kit, he put his smile on his face, he walked over to where the men were, shine mister, I shine your shoes, make them look so good. Uh, no thank you son, hey we got a lot to do, hey you guys, we still got a lot that we got to talk about. Yeah I know, I have some questions too, hey let's go in that lunchroom and let's talk a little bit more. Samuelito watched this whole big group of guys just go into the lunchroom. Hmm, what were all these men doing here? Some of them, he knew that they were foreigners. Some of them, he knew that they were probably from Mexico City, the way that they were dressed. Samuelito and the blind men, they decided they were going to listen and find out what the men were talking about. <gasps> See no blind man. Do you hear this? Shh, Samuelito. Let me listen. Samuelito, he ran a little bit and then, whoa!
Oops! He forgot his shoe shining kit! He ran back, grabbed his shoe shining kit. Okay, I'll see you later. I'll see you later, senor. He's got his shoe shining kit. He's got a big smile on his face. And he is running. Woo! What kind of news was Samuelito and the blind man hearing? What? I wonder what could get him so excited like that. I like how Samuel Lito and his mama and his sister in this lesson have been growing in their prayer life. They are praying together. They're praying for Papa and remember they prayed for him to feel better and he started to feel better and he was able to work and now they're praying for Papa to become a Christian. They're also praying for Samuelito for a miracle, for him to go to school. They are praying. They're learning to talk to God. Sometimes we think that God is so far away, right? But I want you to know this. The Bible talks about how God is everywhere. God sees us, he hears us. The Bible says that his ears are open to when we cry out to him. He knows when we're praying and he loves that. He takes joy and when we come before him as his child and we pray. And maybe you're saying, but why do we, what do I say, right? You just talk to God. You can start off with, good morning, Lord, if you're praying in the morning. Hello, God. Thank you for listening to me. Maybe you've got some burdens that are heavy on your heart. You can share those with God. I want you to think of God as your Father. He loves you, and He listens to your prayers. Next week is our very last chapter, and you are going to see how God answers several of Samuelito's prayers. It is going to be so exciting. I hope you will join me for the very last chapter, chapter six, next lesson for our story, A Miracle for Samuelito.